What is a user story? A user story is an agile software development term that is describe the required functionality needed coming from the end user, which and the customer. So it describes uh, what it's needed and why is it needed and telling you, the builder, how can you develop this functionality to fit in the end user. And there are different structures of user story and the main one that's so popular is this regular template of structure of user story that describes the required and desired functionality. And one thing about user story, it's something that must be fulfilling a need. Uh, you hardly ever see a user story that's written in the point of the, the person that's creating the functionality or like the engineers or the developer, but it's something that's written at the point of the person that will be benefiting from that new functionality. So that's why we have this describe and the desire written in this template, this popular template that's formal. And this template is the, is the role, goal, and benefits, and also must have an acceptance criteria. So the role is basically asking like, who are we building this for? And this role can be anyone as, as an online shopper, as a business owner, uh, as a scrum master, as a YouTuber, as a literally anyone any persona that's needed that needs this new functionality or that desire something. So that's the role, which in other words is also called the who. Um, the second one is the goal. Like, what do they want? Like, what do they need? What are their desire? What, des what functionality do they desire? So by describing this in the user story format, so the, end, the developers can able to know what's needed so they can able to do this work. So the next thing is also the benefit. Why do they want it? So what is the benefit of we developing this new functionality? So what is the benefit of this user having this? So that's why going back to the value of you building this and also getting the, the developers to see the importance of what they are building. And the next most important thing for user story should have is acceptance criteria. And acceptance criteria is also is describing how would success look like? With all of these requests you're asking me, so how would it look like when it's completed? So that's where the acceptance criteria comes in place. So we can't have a user story without having a well-written acceptance criteria. So the user story will always have the who, what, and why, where they are describing the role, goal, and benefits, and also it should also describe what would it look like when, I, when they were able to do the development part of the work. So they have these templates where you will always see regardless of what kind of environment you work. If you work in healthcare, you work in, uh, you work in finance, you work in anything. Regardless, you can use this template in any environment. Whereby you always see that it started from uh, as a user, which is also explaining the persona, the user type, which I was just describing the, as an online shopper, as a visitor, as a YouTuber, as a anything. Uh, I want to, so that's where the what comes in place, like what do they want, what, do, what job do they want done or what new functionality do they desire, what are we trying to achieve, so that the user benefits, why do they want it, what's the benefit of you having it, so you always see this template as, as a user, I would like this so that, so that's how the user story functionality is written, and always at the end to should have an acceptance criteria. So that's a simple description of what a user story is and what a structure of a user story and what a things a user story should have. And it's always, at always given time, we try to achieve uh, something that a customer wants. Uh, other points too I have uh, behind me here, it's an example of a user story. So behind me, I have example of a user story whereby I'm just using an example as an online shopper because this I think a lot of people can relate to this. I want to make it as broad as possible and I felt like this as an online shopper I want to uh, add product in my shopping cart so that I can purchase product so if you ask who is the who in this in this place is an online shopper an online shopper is the who 
uh, what do they want to add product so they want to add product in my shopping cart so why do they want it what is the benefit of this 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 online shopper having it so i can purchase purchase product so they can purchase product online so that's a simple example about uh, as a user story and I'm going to be doing a Jira video soon about user story where I'll give a little bit more example where you can also relate this to like your current work and stuff. Acceptor criteria also have a template which is the given when and then. So this template is not mandatory, you will not always see this maybe in your user story but it's something that can help you guide your team or guide you to coach a PO on how you can come up with acceptor criteria because sometimes people find that part very difficult whereby we can always write what the, users, what the user want and then it becomes a little challenging to describe how would it look like, how can we tell that this user were able to get what they want and that's where the acceptance criteria comes in place and it's very very important for a user story should have an acceptance criteria because we are telling the engineers what the end user wants and how and what and why do they want it and also what would the end product look like so if we can able to accomplish all of this end product based on this list of given criteria then get what we have our increments so in case of this example of as an online shopper i would like to add product in my cart so i can shop online right so it's saying that how can we tell that this pro this customer online shopper is able to get this functionality whereby given that my shopping cart is empty, right? So when they are shopping in the beginning, they shouldn't have anything in their cart. They wish the engineer should be able to create a functionality whereby before they have anything on their cart, the shopping cart itself is empty. When I add product to my cart, so when they, they try to create, do that functionality, when they do add product to their cart, then my cart should contain one added product. So the engineer should be able to create a functionality whereby when they add only one product to their cart, it should only be that one product in the cart, not multiple products. So if this customer can able to do this on their online shopping site, then guess what? The, the job is done. The, the engineer was successfully able to do the work. So that's why the, uh, the acceptance criteria is very, very important. So who can write user story? So when it comes to writing user story, basically, Anyone can write the user story, uh, but it is true for the most part, we'll see product owner and business analysts writing user stories. But anyone that's the subject matter expert, SME, can write a user story. Anyone that have the knowledge of what's needed can write a user story. And sometimes too, you the scrum master that have knowledge of like uh, what needed to be done, can also can write user story. So there's no such thing as saying that it's only one person that's required to write user story but anyone can write the user story, but just that it will always, always have to go through the product owner, right? And the conversation and the communications will happen in the team before we just put things in the spring backlog. So that's what who, who can write user story. So in summary about everything, we have like characteristics of user story or how can we help generate this user story needed for our work. So we have the three W's, which I already described above, which is the who, what, and why, right? Those are the three W's, so that can help you ensure that you have the right user story. And also we have the three C's. The three C's just help us to promote conversation and bring the transparency needed for that user story. And that's something you can always use during backlog refinement, during sprint planning, whereby the product owner will call out the user story and read out the user story to the team. And the team can ask any question and if they have anything that needed to be clarified in the description, in the requirements or functionality, then we can ask those questions and the second C is the conversation which is based on those questions being asked create conversation around that user story so everyone can be transparent and be able to understand what's needed of them and the last C is the confirmation meaning that after the discussion and everyone will be we agree with what's in the user story then we can now commit to that so that's what the three C is about and also the other thing that's very common when it comes to ensuring that we can help prepare and get a good user story is the invest criteria, which is the Bilwaki invest criteria. It also uses to help ensure that we have the right user story needed before we can commit to it during spring backlog, which the I stands for the independent, meaning that the user story should be independent. Uh, we shouldn't have any dependency before we commit to it in the sprint. 
and end main user story should be negotiable like whereby we can communicate with the product owner and negotiate some user story in case if that's something that's not fully well described or there's something missing in that user story whereby the product owner can be open and willing to accept the team's the team request and the team on so the team can be able to negotiate regarding that user story and the V stands for the valuable because we can't just commit to a story that's not valuable to the end users and also to the business. So we have to ensure that's in place. And the E stands for the estimates, whereby the en engineers can sit down and have conversation and understand the user story so that it can be easier for them to be able to estimate using the Fibonacci sequence and story pointing. And also the S stand is for the small. So it should be small enough to fit in a sprint so we can't just commit to a big story because then it's to be challenging for the team to be able to complete it within a sprint. And T also is testable, meaning that we should have a user story that's not only for development, but user story should be part of the end-to-end, -end, uh, the, the vertical slicing, where it's like all development, uh, testing, designing, that involve all the software development lifecycle in that one user story. So I hope these little tips about user story have been helpful. Please, if you find my content valuable, like and subscribe to Aisha's Chrome platform. I appreciate all the love and support. And see you all again next time.